and welcome to Concert Pipeline. That's Ian Schippel. And that is Mr. Steve Jones. All right. Thank you for censoring yourself, Jens. Today on the program, we have an, uh, a musician named Jess Robbins She's from the band Course. Welcome, Jess. Welcome the band Course. Yes. Uh, so we're going to get to talk to Jess in just a little bit. But before that, Jens, you wanted to go, we, go a little bit more in depth from last week. Uh, and tell us a little bit about your uh, second COVID shot and how you were yes. down for the count. You... I was so down for the count, dude. For I those mean, completionists I like to... that, that watched uh, or listened to last week's episode, uh, you are right-handed and you got the shot in your left arm. So that is where we leave off. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let me uh, let me uh, just rewind a little bit. Like, Sorry, I have to make the sound effects like this is actually on cassette tape from the okay. 80s, like And then um, for those of you that don't know what bloop is, that's the sound that the cassette tape player makes when you press the rewind button, because bloop, you, can bloop, either, bloop. Yes. you can either you can either push the rewind button, which makes it lock in place, and then it goes bloop, right, it's tape rewinding, or you can hold it down, which doesn't lock it in place, and then as soon as you let go, it stops, right? And that's what that sound is, it's like you know, and then you can like go. Uh, I just wanted to take this, you know, uh, opportunity to uh, provide an educational insight onto uh, how audio cassette tapes work. <laughs> There's a reason that people tune into this program, Jens, and that is absolutely it. So thank you for the educational. Uh, thank lesson. you. I don't. Uh, you know, I, I read recently. Um, last time I was, you know, asleep and dreaming that 99% um, of our subscribers uh, listen to us because of our amazing educational content about what happened, you know, in, in technology back in uh, 1980s. Jens was around when the eight track was here, so next week no, on the program uh, he'll be yeah. sharing with you what eight, eight track sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I might have to do some googling on that. <laughs> But anyway, I just wanted to say, I'm just going to rewind just a tiny bit um, about the whole COVID thing. So this was on a, this was a weekend. I don't yes. know how popular it is to get your shots on a weekend. I like doing it on the Saturday. I did it mine, uh, on the Saturday. It worked out well uh, because then I could just, you know, take it easy on Sunday and be back in action for work on Monday because I'm a working fool. So exactly. Yeah. So I figured, you know, Saturday morning, like the first appointment I could get in the morning would be good because that would give me, a, you know, almost 48 hours or something to recover uh, because I love to hoard my vacation time and my six for all the international all that trips that you're for all the trips, days. you yeah. know, exactly. Yeah. I'd rather be sipping a martini and, you know, uh, I don't know, some foreign country, you know, than hanging out here on my back and, you know, half unconscious trying to deal with COVID symptoms uh, on a I, Wednesday or whatever. <laughs> I do think that in the, you know, 10 plus years of our friendship that, that I think you may have given one day or a half a day to hanging out with me in some capacity. I don't remember what it was, maybe no, a concert or I've something. I've never done that with but... anyone. <laughs> <laughs> just a wife. No, yeah. don't take it personally. <laughs> it's just one of those things about our country. You know, uh, we don't get a lot of vacation time in comparison to many, many, many other countries. And um, that sucks. You know, you just gotta be as resourceful as you can and hoard that time and use it um, however you want. And, you know, however you want. And, it, it, and, and that, that does not include with me. So <laughs> I got no worries there. <laughs> it would include with you if I was like on a road trip and we were like podcasting while I was in Utah mm -hmm. or whatever, which we never did when I went to Utah because there's like no cell reception or like gasoline in that state. <laughs> There's no gasoline. Oh man, you just gotta keep plowing right on through to Dude, Wyoming, right? Yeah, I mean, we almost ran out of gas. It was there was like no gas station. Like, what is wrong with the state? It's just there's so much beauty. Like, there's so much nature and just shocking natural beauty everywhere. But a fucking gas station, like, you've you've almost run out of electricity in the past in I, this in this area where there are. <laughs> Fuck electric electric cars in this area. There's right. nothing. I mean, <laughs> we found two. Uh, when we did this, we were just you know on a regular, you know, combustion engine automobile. But uh, when we were in Southern Utah, uh, I mean, we encountered maybe two charging stations, and mm -hmm. they weren't legit charging stations. They were like 
oh, if you stay at our hotel, you get to pay for our charging. You know? Oh, wow. That's okay. the kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to be super excited about electric cars, but fuck it. <laughs> I'm not, they're not they're not there yet buy one. No, the infrastructure is not there yet but um anyway what was i talking about you're talking uh, about your shot second covid shot i don't want to i don't want anyone to think i'm a wimp but no um, i would never i would never think that about you yet <laughs> i know okay. steve never i know I, I know that you think i'm like rugged and this like manly man man even though i have Outdoors, iron yeah. man and shit like you have um you know and all these ragnar marathons or triathlons or whatever i mean called. if i had a dollar for the nine number of times i'd be like hey jens let's do the podcast and you're like i sorry i can't get you i'm up here at mount everest or i'm you know sailing on the seven seas or you know or what have you you know it's uh i yeah. would be a rich man <laughs> uh, totally you'd be like jeff bezos rich except you know not the asshole that he is Right. Um, oh, you know what? On the last time, I don't mean to be totally tangential. <laughs> we are all over the place. But in the last podcast, what I wanted to say about Jeff Bezos is how awesome his ex-wife is. Have you heard about her stories and how hard it is for her to give away all the money that she got out of the marriage? It's like apparently no. if you have billions, it's really hard to get rid of it. There's so much paperwork involved in either donating it or giving it away she doesn't want it she just giving, doesn't want him to have it or charities or whatever no, she's she's she, i mean she has so much of it her, her life is is around you know um i mean don't quote me on this but from what i remember from the article that i read was about um you know dedicating a big chunk of her life to getting rid of her wealth after the divorce um she didn't need it right she didn't want to be like um you know, one of these people that 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 sits on their cash and is arrogant yeah. motherfucker, right? She was like, "No, dude, I'm gonna find out how to get rid of this money. I'm gonna give it to you know fantastic organizations." And she she feel she realized in the process of this that it is not easy. There's so much bureaucratic bullshit that you have to go through to simply give away money. Wow. And anyway, if, for anyone that's interested. You just Google Google his ex wife. And it's, it's I see why story. they were not a good fit together. You know because right? he he can't even you know take care of his employees, and she's trying to uh, you know she's like, give it so yeah. hard, bless her heart, to give away the money. Yes. Uh, but anyway, what was we were talking about? The COVID shot. The, the, the um, shot. Yeah. The shot. So a couple times in my life, I've been hit with things like the flu, or like oh my god, I threw up my back. And all of a sudden, instead of thinking that I was a rugged man, I'm this little wimpy fucking kid, like lying on the floor, like, oh my God, I'm back. Or, oh my God, my shot, my COVID shot. Oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm like this overly dramatic crybaby. Okay. That's, I don't like to admit this, but I am admitting this on the podcast. And, uh, you know, I, I, I am certain that everyone, I don't care if you're, Who's that roundhouse kick guy? Chuck the Norris. Kick guy. Chuck Norris. I don't care if your name is fucking Chuck Norris. You've had this experience at least once in your <laughs> life. <laughs> I don't care if you're Chuck Norris, if you're Arnold Schwarzenegger, if you're that Rocky actor dude. Uh, yeah. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Sylvester you're Stallone. You're doing great with the names. Yeah. I suck. Bruce I suck Lee, names. You know Jackie that. Chan. Bruce Lee, going, Jackie yeah. Chan, the, the Pink Panther guy. Okay. Uh, Steve uh, Martin. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. The, the original Pink Panther. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but but his 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 Cato, the guy that used to come out of the closet or out of from the ceiling or whatever, and just all of a sudden attack um, um, the Pink Panther dude. Anyway, Great story. Okay. I don't care who you are. Everyone has had this like crybaby moment. So um, that's sort of what happened. You know, I I I, I this was a Saturday. I didn't want to miss any work. I was at the, the vaccination clinic. Um, at nine o'clock, I got my shot. I mean, the whole thing was like five minutes. Yeah. I was so excited that I got my second shot. I completely forgot to sit down in that huge ass waiting area that I had to uh -huh. walk through to get to the exit. Yeah. With a big ass TV that had a time on it that said, you may leave at- After 15 minutes. 23, right. Yeah. 
You didn't wait so your excited. 15 minutes? I didn't see that. No, I completely, I didn't see it. I was blind. I don't know what my problem was. I just walked out the door and I'm like, I'm so excited. Oh my God. And then I got to my car and I realized, oh shit. There's like a sticker on my shirt that says you cannot leave until uh, 9.23, right? Yeah. And, and then on my watch, it's like, I don't actually wear a watch, but on my phone, it was like you know, 9.05 or whatever. Right. Like, damn, I better sit in my car for a while in case I pass out. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. But went home. Uh, and I would say after about two hours, I started feeling, okay, yeah, you know, this, the sore area in my left arm is a little, a little bit sore, so it's getting more sore, it's getting more sore. Yeah, it's probably more sore than it was the first time around. Um, I had the Mar uh, Moderna, uh, like you did. We both had Mo yep. Moderna, right? Um, but then, dude, my fucking right arm, almost in the same shot area that my left arm was in, uh -huh. started getting super, super, super sore. And there were other parts of my body, too, that were also getting sore, but it was mostly just my right arm. I hardly could get any sleep. It didn't matter if I slept on my left arm on my right arm i was tossing and turning I'm like oh my god i was trying to take like i was trying to take uh drugs you know like melatonin to help uh -huh. me sleep uh, crack, that didn't yeah. work so i like yeah. I, I didn't have any crack i've actually never done crack but i you know slammed a beer i did some edibles i'm like my god i gotta bust out the jägermeister like please like knock me out man i'm uh -huh. desperate and i was just i mean i was gone i was in a complete fog zero energy totally lethargic um with like these crazy muscle, muscle aches all over my body for a good, good two and a half days wow i want to think that all of that was legit you know but if, if, if some of that was psychosomatic and in my head <laughs> talk to yourself about it yeah yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah but hey man i did get a i, I did take a day off of work uh, to, to recover and now i feel fucking awesome so you feel you, back on your feet Back, you know, scaling mountains, and uh, and I know where you'll be. I'm this taking weekend, on Everest so. tomorrow, dude. Yeah, <laughs> don't wait for the weekend. I got it. I'll yeah. be there. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right, well, let's bring our guest in, Jens. That was a great story. Thanks. Uh, I'm glad you're here with us today, and uh, uh, and you survived the shot. So congratulations. And I just want to say thank God for Netflix and for your support, uh, making sure that I'm still alive every day, uh, breathing. You know, um, I was able to take care of the dog. Uh, the dog is still alive, so. Um, I just want to say, you know, Netflix has some fucking awesome shows <laughs> that are in Spanish that come from Mexico. I don't know why, but every single one of them have to have to do with drug cartels. Uh, <laughs> but uh -huh. they're awesome, and you should watch them. You're into them. I like it. Three. Yes. All right. Well, Jens, we're going to bring in Jess Robbins here from the band Course. Uh, let's bring her on in now. My earbuds broke this week. Can you hear me okay? I can. They broke? Yeah, I don't, they just don't work. They just stopped working. Oh no, that's no good. Yeah. I'm, I use them all the time. I don't know where I'd be without them. So <laughs> I know. And I don't know what happened because they're not old. I don't know. This happens yeah. to me. I just things break. So yeah, I mean it's 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 gonna happen. So how are you doing today, Jess? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Not just shabby. Thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, uh, let's start with how this past year has been for you. How have things, how did things change? And, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're kind of growing past a lot of uh, what happened, but, you know, tell me about your, your most recent year. Okay. Well, yeah, it's been um, not great. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like a homebody, so I don't mind being at home and it's been nice um, having that time, but um, it's just been like hard, you know, just everything's been more difficult than it normally would. And I do miss like seeing friends or just like being out a little bit, even though I don't love going out so much, but just the little, you need that little bit of, um, you know, something. So it's just been, a little rough, but um, yeah, so. Do you feel you've been able to get out more recently? Not really. I'm in Chicago. Um, uh, the numbers yeah. are like crazy here. They're just like worse than ever. Um, so I, I got my second vaccine a week ago today. Congratulations. So, thank you. <laughs> so I do feel like in a week I'll be like fully vaccinated or whatever. So 
I feel like I could start going out more, but I'm not like in a rush to like go to like an indoor restaurant or anything. You know what I mean? Like, not, yeah, not really. I, I do know what you mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of, and the same thing with concerts, right? You know, I mean, it's been over a year since I've been to a concert and I miss them like nobody's business, right? <laughs> but, uh-huh. but, but still, I want to get out to shows, but I want it to be right. I, even though I've had both shots for three weeks, I still, oh, okay. I'm not comfortable. I'm, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not comfortable going into a, like a show in a theater or a tight club or anything like that. I'll go to an outdoors thing where there's space or something, but you know, yeah. it's still, it still doesn't feel that comfortable, right? No, I don't know if it ever will really. I mean, like, I hope it does, but I think we're all trying and I think um, I talked to the band on the week we had a rehearsal everyone's vaccinated now which is I we're still wearing masks and rehearsal but um, we were like most of them aren't comfortable even doing an indoor show like even with like a small amount of people like in a crowded kind of bar place like we would do like an outdoor venue maybe or I don't know it's just not it doesn't feel right yet you know to I don't know yeah um, yeah well let's let's go back toward the the beginning and then work our okay. way forward as that sound huh? <laughs> so, so tell me about what music you listened to as a kid what was play, what were your play, parents playing in the house um you know um I don't know my dad played a lot of Paul Simon for me as a kid and the Beatles um and like Tracy Chapman and just like I don't know he had interesting uh, taste, but yeah, he, I did, um, you know, but he also like introduced me like the Violent Femmes and like um, Depeche Mode and I, you know, that um, kind of music as well. So yeah, so I grew up listening to like all of that and, um, you know, other, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I don't know. My dad took me to a Madonna concert once, but he covered my eyes the whole time because she was like humping a bed. Um, so that was that was your first concert, right? Probably. I was very little. <laughs> like why? He didn't. He didn't know what to expect, or <laughs> I don't think he realized. But she was like humping a bed, and just like a lot of things. Like I don't remember seeing any of it because my friend and I, he did like this. He was like this. Both, uh, both of his hands over our eyes uh-huh. um but yeah I loved Madonna back in the day <laughs> yeah yeah not as much anymore I mean I do I don't know she's okay I just watched the league of their own have you ever seen that movie yeah okay yeah. Tom Hanks and yeah yep, Madonna Coach, a, Donald. I just watched that recently I have no idea why but yeah <laughs> <laughs> did how did it feel like 25 years after it was made has it been that long oh my god I, um I, it felt good. I mean, it's like a classic, you know, it's like, it doesn't feel that old. Yeah. So it's it's timeless. Good. It's timeless. Yeah, it That's good. Timeless. It's timeless. <laughs> um, Excellent. It, it, and so as a kid, you, uh, you played piano as well, right? Yeah. Piano mostly. I didn't play guitar till college. Um, and I sang in like choruses in high school, stuff like that was in musicals. Um, but yeah, I didn't really get into guitar until later, like college which I feel like is later for most people yeah. now it's been a while but yeah yeah and so what t- what inspired you to pick up the piano did your parents push you towards it as one of those like first instruments to learn it's just like go to Mrs. Long's house and she had all these crazy cats and so yeah I did that but I wasn't she said Jessica has a natural ability but she doesn't practice like I wasn't very good at practicing um and they just I don't know if I got kicked out or if she just, or if I finally was like, I just can't do this anymore. Like it wasn't fun. So. Yeah. Did you ever go back to it or did you? Yeah. Yeah. No. And I play now a little bit. I'd like to do it more, but I didn't have a piano for a while. I now finally have a piano. So I just didn't have it's, you know, access. So do you feel like you didn't learn anything? Did you take, learn anything from Mrs. Long or just, it wasn't a good fit? Um, no, I, I just think you mean back at the time in the day or yeah. Um, yeah, I just think I was just not a good student, you know? Yeah. I think I became a better student later on, but at the time it was also the personality of the teacher, you know, it was like, I was forced to go. 
and it was just the recitals and all of that was stressful so yeah did you have did you have interest in music in high school did you take any classes or yeah yeah I did um I took um choir like more like singing classes and like musical theater stuff um but yeah not I wasn't in like the band in high school no what'd you do in musical theater um, I'm trying to think which we did like Guys and Dolls and Patience, which is an opera, which was kind of, um, I remember the neighbors complained about me because we lived in an apartment and I would sing the opera like it's so loud and like annoying because you hold the notes and the neighbors complained about me to my parents. <laughs> yeah. The building. <laughs> Can you hit those notes? I mean... No, I don't know. I haven't tried opera in a long time. Maybe, probably not too well anymore. That, now's a perfect time to try, Jess. Come on. <laughs> Let's do it together, you and me. You do it. Oh, too. this is gonna this is gonna be real bad. Okay, okay. So this is a not. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't know. I I like yeah. opera. It's nice to you know. <laughs> yeah, and and so what inspired you to pick up the guitar after grad school? Um. Well, no, in college, I joined a fish cover band, which is hilarious. Yep. Um, and my best friend who I um, made friends with in our freshman year, her dad um, was a songwriter. And um, anyway, she had like 10 electric guitars. She had like all these electric guitars in her room. And I was like, whoa. And so she just taught me like a few things. And then I bought my own like acoustic. I think I bought like a $90 Fender acoustic at Guitar Center or somewhere like that. And then, yeah, and then I just started playing and I did mostly by ear. I never really, I took a few classes, but I mostly just would learn covers and then like figure out like how to write. Yeah, so you can't really read music then? I had no, not really. I probably could a little, but not a lot. Some of the best can, yeah. you know, I mean, it's like, it, it's really amazing to me that like Dave Grohl doesn't read music, you know? I, I mean, John yeah. Lennon didn't, right? I mean, just. It's how it is. Yeah. So, so tell me about the Fish Cover Band. What, how did that come about? And uh, and what was your role in it? Paint I mean, I was just like backup singer. And I like, you know, because there wasn't really much to do. And I wore sunglasses at the shows because I was so scared. I was so scared back then. I would wear sun. It's so lame, but I would wear sunglasses. Um, and they, and it was a bunch of guys who were like very talented musicians. You know, I mean, to play. I mean, Fish. Whether you like them or hate them, they're such like. You bring up Fish, and people are either like, I hate them or I love them. Um, I don't feel like there's a lot of in between, but they are. You know, the music's very um, technical, so those guys were good. So I learned a lot from them, and I didn't do it for very long, but. It was fun. Did you see Fish live? Like, were you a fan? I saw them one time. I don't even remember when. I, like in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how or when. I also like was probably like doing smoking pot. <laughs> doing I mean, you're at a Fish concert, so yeah. you know. You, you, I'm imagining you weren't the only one. Uh. <laughs> no, I wasn't the only one. Um, oh yeah, so. Don't remember too well, but yeah, I think I have you been to a fish show? I have not. And you, you mentioned that in, I, I'm, I am in that indifference, you know, for, uh, you know, I couldn't name a fish song to save my life probably. <laughs> so I don't have anything against them per se, uh, but I'm sure Trey right. Anastasio is, you know, great, but uh, you know, but I'm, you know, I'm not a fan or anything necessarily. Yeah. No, I, I'm not, I, I don't really listen to them anymore. I mean, I think when I, I listen to the songs when, with the band, but not like, I don't think I've like continued to keep going with that, you know. I do like the Grateful Dead though. I do like the Grateful Dead. You saw them live ever or with John Mayer or anything? Mm -mm. No. no, have you seen them with John Mayer or no? Well, it's another I one, I, I, haven't, I haven't latched yeah. on to a lot of that type of music you know it's uh, or sought it out necessarily so yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. so I've missed out on some of some of that experience yeah. but they come to Chicago they played it like Wrigley with John Mayer like a couple years ago um 
but yeah, but I don't really, I don't like going to big stadium shows. Um, no, I'm not big on the stadium shows either. That's the thing. It's too much, you know, it's just too much. I like club shows, you know, like yeah. club or small theater uh, shows. Yeah. Those are my sort of bands generally. So yeah, um, I can relate yeah. to that. I, I try and actively avoid the, the big stadium ones, unless it's someone I really like, but that's a lot of, it's just too much, too many people and exactly yeah. and now i don't know if i'd ever go to something like that so yeah yeah it's completely different now for sure yeah. um so being from chicago just a side note aside from music are you a bears fan i think i mean my boyfriend's really into the football which is i've never had a boyfriend so into football so i've like watched shows and he has like season tickets so i've like mm. You know, I haven't actually haven't gone with him, but I, he's invited me, but I haven't gone yet. And that was now, I mean, last year there wasn't even a season we could go oh. to. So um, I don't know. I, I, football's okay. I, I still don't understand that. I've watched it many times and I still don't understand it. Some people have explained I don't get what's happening. <laughs> that's, that's fair. My, my girlfriend's from Wisconsin. So uh, we went to back to visit her family a year and a half ago, December before COVID. Uh, started and um, and you know I have a friend out there and he has season tickets to uh, to the Packers yeah. and invited me to uh, the Bears Packers game and it was a big rivalry there so it was uh, yeah, okay. it was a unique I experience. Like the Packers, no, no, no Packers, no, that's bad. That's like yeah, not allowed to say Packers. not allowed to say their name in that house, huh? <laughs> no, that'd be bad. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, I don't really. I don't know. I don't understand it. I don't understand that there's like two separate teams. Like the defense and offense never play. I'm going to sound really dumb to anyone listening, but they don't ever play the same, right? Like they don't switch off. Sure. Weird. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not that big of a fan either. I'm kind of midline on on football. I like I'm I like baseball a lot better. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's just, I'm not one of those, I invest more in different areas and than sports, you know, I mean, I'll watch it if it's on and I yeah. enjoy, you know, hanging out with people and watching it, but uh, watching a game or going to a game. Right. Uh, but, yeah. but as far as following players and follow, you know, the, it's I don't have time for that, you know, there's 180, you know, baseball games in a season, like yeah. too, it's, it's too, and I know there's a lot less football, but yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's too much to follow so. it's very confusing yeah I've not, i used to like i mean you know basketball is fun to watch i feel like it moves quicker i've been to a bulls game yeah. um you know and that's like more fun i feel like it moves and there's like half you know fun lights and stuff happening but i don't know you, all you need are the lights right so <laughs> yeah just some lights <laughs> yeah lights. but yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you made back to music, I guess. I guess we'll go back to music. Yeah, so no, let's music. take the football. <laughs> oh yeah, we're doing great on football, right? But you and I. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, Any football fans going to be like, well, "What's wrong?" <laughs> they're turning into the wrong podcast yeah. if they're if they're a football fan. I'll just let them know that now. So. <laughs> uh, they're like, we're looking for the latest of uh, you know, the Bears and. <laughs> <laughs> from exactly. uh, concert what pipeline that's this week let me pull them up <laughs> yeah um 2012 you made habitat mm -hmm. tell me about that oh um i don't remember no i i made that <laughs> i'm just kidding um i um yeah that was an ep um that was fun i made it with my friend colin um yeah it was just like a solo project um I think I was still like trying to find my groove, like working with people sound wise, you know, <laughs> figuring everything out, but yeah. Yeah, what did, what did you learn from that experience? Um, just to like take control more of my own music. And um, I don't know, I, it was just interesting to work with a bunch of different people. And um, yeah, I just learned to, yeah, take more control of my music and be and try to just take some more time to figure out like what I wanted from music in general. Yeah. Yeah. And so then a, a few years ago, um, you made a solo album, uh, Lightfield, yeah. which uh, um, I listened to uh, that as well and, uh, and dig it. And um, 
winter of 83 right yeah, yeah. Um, on, on that album tell me um w why that time in particular were you born in 83 no um okay. but there's a reason why i had written this song called summer of 92 mm. which didn't make it to the record so then i wrote winter of 83 and then i'm like maybe i should do like spring of 71 <laughs> I picked 83 because it rhymes well. It's like I was doing like the cadence of the song. There's really no rhyme or reason to the date. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> and, and and so tell me about kind of pulling that album together. What like what did you take from you know Habitat that you put in were able to put into this your solo album there? Um so there was a I had um kids in between. Mm. There, so from 12 to 8 that 2012 to 18 um and i had twins um randomly um no, none in your family no so they're identical so it was a spontaneous um happening they said it's a freak accident um because uh -huh. with paternal twins it's like it could be like maternal age hereditary um it could be um a lot of different factors but for identical twins it's a actual they don't understand why it happened so yeah yeah um so i was very um stressed out so light a very dark record i don't know if you noticed that and sad uh -huh. depressing and like very um somber and i was literally writing songs like in the bathroom in between like dealing with the children <laughs> and so you, the you take breaks or you can get it right you know yeah, like, oh my God, that was a rough period, a very rough period. Um, and then I, you know, had, and then, um, so um, in between, so I had Will, uh, the producer, who also had a kid, and I, I'd go to his house and his, we'd um, do like takes in between the baby sleeping. And that was just like my life. Like everywhere I went, everyone, someone had a baby or like something and we just had to be quiet. We had to, <laughs> it was crazy. So, yeah. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're dedicated to your craft, so that's good, right? <laughs> yeah, but it like saved me really because I was going through such a hard time and in a horrible relationship and like really bad situation and the music I really feel I know it sounds cheesy but it did like really save me from those times where I was um really struggling like really like I couldn't get out of like bad moments you know so I don't know what I would have done like it was such a good even though that album I didn't do much you know I I came out and then I went through a divorce right away. Like literally it came out, things happened. I wasn't able to do much of that record, but I do love that record. I just felt, you know, I, I didn't have the uh, mind space to, you yeah. know. So, so, so how much of yourself do you put into your music? How personal is it for you versus, you know, I mean, some artists, you know, really connect with themselves and through their music and others write more kind of uh, hypothetically like, you know uh, character driven yeah um i think a little of both that record is definitely um very um like i it it touched on a lot of things that was happening in my life um but um the latest record i think would be like half and half which is like much more upbeat and not <laughs> much um yeah you're finding yourself in a more positive place recently yeah yeah much better much better that was a dark time very bad um yeah no much better now and that's why i really struggled to write actually i was i so Lightfield came out i went through the divorce and then i was just very um i was happy to be out of that relationship and happy to like be free and happy in a new relationship eventually and i could not write anything i was just like I have nothing to say. Like I'm good. Yeah. Like, so Things are good. just good. You're, it's, it's like you kind of want to get to that dark place a little bit so you can your music can you know you can have that outlook for the music, right? Yeah, exactly. I don't, it's terrible, but yeah, and I it's if there is truth in that, and I think um, I had written "Give It All Away." That was probably the first song I wrote for the latest record, 
but then I got stuck and I couldn't write. So my friend Kevin, who's a songwriter in Chicago, Kevin Perkle, um, he we co-wrote um, three songs on this latest record, and he was like, write a story, like write um, a short story or just like anything. And so I started to write short stories, and then we would meet and work on songs through the fiction writing that I was doing. Um, and then I liked doing that so much that I wrote a fictional um, story for each song on the record. So yeah. So so tell me about that because I I, I wrote about that. So how how is that being released and how are how is the fictional story tied into the song okay so yeah so i'm going to release in a chat book which is like um not it's like a paper book more like poetry is put in chat books or short very short story collections um so um and it's easy i didn't want to be like if people bought the record like send them a pdf like who's gonna read right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a pdf I wanted to have something like tangible. Um, and so for like 16 and um, Nick of Time and The Flame, which are three songs, those are the ones I wrote with Kevin, those stories I wrote prior to writing the song. And then the six, the rest of the six more, I wrote after writing the songs. So I finally got out of the rut, I was able to write the rest of the record and then I enjoy and then quarantine happened I was like I'm just gonna I really enjoyed writing um like literary fiction and kind of like escaping into these uh, characters I mean a lot of them are not necessarily related to the song directly or they're more like a feel so I would like um like Darkest Tower which is a song is really about um you know it's more like imagery the way I wrote it lyrically um, where the story is about a 13 year old boy named Robbie who has like anxiety about um, a white van he keeps seeing around his neighborhood. And anyway, so um, yeah, so I just wanted to um, write some stories that, oh, so the whole point of Darkest Power is that it like goes with the rhythm of the song, where like the song kind of starts slow and then it picks up and the pace of the story picks up in kind of the same way the um the music does okay excellent and so like 16 for example i know that song is about kind of putting yourself back in your 16 year old self right yeah. so the the literary piece kind of ties into uh into that and where you were at that point in your life too yeah that one's definitely much more directly related like the stories about being 16 the songs about being 16 um that one is for sure directly related. And that's because I wrote the songs before the music. So it, we we based the song off of the story basically. Where the other ones I was like, what can I find within this song to write a story about? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so what brought you to Dripping Springs, Texas um, to record this? Like, I mean, that was a bit of a trip for you, right? Yeah, but it was fun. Back in the days when people could travel Right, back way you know, back when. Back to the old days. <laughs> did you um, take a plane? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> a plane without a mask and uh -huh. like yeah, and a train. Um, yeah, so Kevin, who I wrote the song with, recommended I work with this guy Dan, who was in Austin. Um, and he was making music that I really thought was great. And also I wanted to kind of change my sound to be more synth pop. I was like started to go back like that Depeche Mode, The Cure, kind of um, bands like Always and like, you know, things like that. And I um, just wanted a more upbeat, like not so like, I don't know, depressing um, record. And I just really liked the sounds he was coming up with um, on some of his projects. And I like the idea of going somewhere else. Like I've recorded everywhere. I mean, I've recorded only in Chicago and so it was so nice to like go with the band to um, this very like rural part of Texas where it was like hill country and it was just us and it was like 90 degrees every you know it's like hot summer and um just like kind of immersed in the moment of that you know yeah how long were you recording for what it was the process of like six days like five or six days yeah 
yeah so you had all the music written really before you went into to record yeah everything was done yeah for the most part and then um we did you know we just spent every day like 10 hours a day working on it and then I was going to go back in like the spring and then that didn't you know happen what happened? yeah <laughs> and you know who came knocking on our doors so yeah I finished the rest of the record in my bathroom okay <laughs> and so did I mean tell me about this like this finally final touches was it pretty much done you just had to kind of master it or what what would it have looked like yeah, as far as it wasn't done. Done. I mean it, yes all the parts were done except one song we had to, two songs we had to record we luckily got in the studio in like February so right before like we knew that like COVID like it was out coronavirus you know they kept hearing it. it was like in China at that point maybe like one case in Seattle um but no one was too freaked out so we went to the studio and we got one day in for the lake which is the last song on the record and then crazy love I hadn't recorded yet so I we did that like my drummer did at his house I did at mine and then we sent it to Dan he mixed it sent it back and crazy process yeah so it's been it's been a while coming for this uh this album so you're probably pretty excited for it to to come out yeah it's been you're right it has been a long time right i feel like i've sat with these songs for a very long time yeah i'm sure everyone who's putting music out right it's like couldn't really There's, do much yeah a lot of sitting on music and waiting to try and release it till you can tour it and yeah. you know that then that's not happening so we're just release it right <laughs> and and uh yeah, yeah, it's been a rough, rough period for sure, but um, but an opportunity for you to write, right? So, yeah. No, I, yeah, I like it. I, I, I would like to be, I, you know, I don't need, you know, I like touring, but I, I'm also fine. I like just putting out music, you know, be like Steely Dan, just put out music and never change. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's going to be quite some time before big tours or I don't know I just don't know like how they're gonna do it I I can't understand how it's gonna happen yet you know what I mean it's I know it's everything's changing so it's yeah I mean it's a patience game you know but also people want to get out and, <laughs> and just do it no. right so. like are they gonna require vaccine like your vaccine card at the door like an ID you know so some yeah some concerts overseas are doing you know are piloting certain certain things right like uh, five thousand yeah. people at a show there's one that's even like you know no mask no distance but you're tested at the beginning of you know before like you have to get tested earlier in the day somewhere else and then uh, you know and for some reason that like th this one this particular one is like you have to get tested at the end of the concert okay uh, be before you leave also so I don't Weird. know if that's just for data but yeah. Yeah, but there's there's ways that they're trying it. So I can see, you know, based on the results of that, you know, that sort of mentality coming here, yeah. right? And you have to get you just have to get tested before you go to a concert, sort of thing, a quick test. And yeah, but if you're vaccinated, why would I guess you still could get it? I guess, right? So yeah, it's, it's a lot more minimal. I know, like I don't know where the cards will come into play or what have you, but you know, I'm sure we're a couple months out from them starting to now that everybody can get it and everything right so yeah. get the vaccine so yeah um so we'll see what happens there you guys um speaking of live shows you guys did a uh like a live streaming show on back in february right yeah that was and from the constellation tell me about that um um well we played the constellation we've played constellation the past three years the first saturday february saturday in february um, so we were like, we should do it again. And they had started these live stream shows. And so we um, did that, but um, my drummer was not feeling comfortable quite yet, um, even doing that. So uh, um, Mikey, sorry, um, the guitarist, he um, played drums and guitar, but it was definitely crazy. It was so weird to be in a venue with no one there. And you'd play a song and it'd just be like silence. The crowd goes wild. Oh, wait. Uh. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah. So that was so um, crazy, but it was really nice. Uh, I love Constellation. They're great people there and great venue. And 
want to support them like as much as possible. And, um, you know, it brought tears to my eyes just being in a venue because I was performing every, every month, you know, at least. And then I, that was the longest actually, even when I had kids, I was like, after I had the twins, I was still performing. Like, I think the next month I did like a, some type of show, like, you know, even though I was probably not feeling great, but yeah, this is definitely couldn't, couldn't say what. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is the longest I'd ever gone without performing. So yeah, and for the show, like you, you guys had to fight snowstorms and everything, right? It was pretty oh, treacherous to get there, huh? It snowed for like two months straight in Chicago, like blizzard. Every time we had a rehearsal, there was a blizzard every time like and then that night it wasn't actually snowing but it was like 20 below with the wind chill see i tell you i i told you about the base, the football game you know like yeah. it was seven degrees there and that's yeah. probably the coldest temperature i've been in i'm a california guy yeah and like uh i don't want to girlfriend i was like never been in negative temperatures don't have any need to know what negative 20 is or anything like that oh, not interested I'm, you know it's, wait where are you exactly in Napa, California. In Napa, okay. So, mm. so that's so nice. I mean, it is horrible here. I don't know why I live here. Every day I ask myself. Right now, or today it was snowing and it was like 30 degrees. It's just like, it's so bad. It's not, <laughs> and it's funny because my friend, she went to Palm Springs or like LA or something um, for the winter because she's like a therapist. So she was like, I'm just gonna do my practice somewhere else. Yeah. And she's like, people don't under, like, she was like the difference, like people in LA are like, oh my God, it's so hard, but they don't, it's like in Chicago, you literally in the winter are, even if the numbers are okay, you're locked in, you can't do anything. Yeah. So it's just like, at least like, like with warm weather, you can go out and walk or yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's we have nothing to complain out about out here, you know. But we pay dearly for it. I'll tell you. So, funny. Your apart, your place looks nice and uh, sunny and happy. Oh, well, it, it is. It is, and I live on here. I live on a vineyard property. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, Whoa. But, but uh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, so it's it's a, uh, you know, uh, you won't find me complaining, especially after. Uh, let's put that back there. There we go. Um, especially, especially after I've been to Wisconsin, you know, like, right. no, nope, I'm, I'm not going to complain, but so, so things are okay. And, uh, and how old are your twins now? Um, five. Five. Okay. So are they, they, do they start kindergarten through this or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Um, how was that? Not, I mean, I don't know. Do you have kids? I have two, yes. Yeah. So my daughter's 10 and my son is seven, so. Oh yeah, so you know. I know. Not easy at all. Um, but um, we actually ended up putting them in a private school at some point because I was like, I can't like. Can't even do it. Yeah, yeah, I it's too much. It. I cannot, like I, it, no. It was so bad. It's so, I feel so bad for all the kids who were who still, I mean, Chicago just, the public schools just opened like a month ago to like a hybrid situation, but it's still hard, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. My kids have been going hybrid for a little while. My daughter's yeah. starting four days a week back at school next week, which is great. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm still, you know, I'm still waiting. You know, I'm, I want it, it needs to be back fully and I need them away from me while I'm working. Like <laughs> I've worked from home for 12 years, but this is, unreal you yeah, know it's i know and it's just like a, oh my god it is so hard um and i think that you know i don't even know if next year i'm really worried that they won't go back full time next year because the trials for zero to nine i don't think start till this summer which means they probably won't have a vaccine for like that age group till um mm. like next like a year from now yeah, the district here is talking about full time. I mean, very quietly, but uh, oh, but they're talking about full time, and I think things are better out here than yeah well, there. Like the union but, is fighting it a lot, and I mean, we there's like just it's, a, it's like the third biggest school district in the country, so it's just a lot of moving parts, you know. So, yeah, I yeah. Know. Well, yeah, I definitely wish you luck with that because I the struggle's real. You know, <laughs> yes, it really is. <laughs> yeah yeah so what what are you looking forward to as we kind of wrap this up what's uh 
Um, I'm just I'm looking forward to the record coming out and the stories and just to like have like go back to record again this summer or just you know maybe play a couple outdoor shows um and yeah i'm just excited to finally release this record because it's a little bit different for me and the band and having a band and having you know i really feel like we're a band that you know i i just i was done being like a solo just me artist it's nice that um to have um just a, a band that's like very like involved and like makes decisions where I don't have to be the only one because I can make decisions with my kids. I make decisions with my job. It's like, I please just make a decision for me. You know what I mean? Because it gets a lot on, on me. Um, so yeah, so that's been really nice. And Mikey, he, um, we're incorporating some of his songs into the band so I can just like play guitar in the background. Oh my God, I love that. It's even better, right? You know, it's just like yeah. you take over, I'll take a break back here. And uh... <laughs> yeah, no, I really like that. It's nice to just not be um, always the one singing or, you know, in front. So sounds like you guys have a good dynamic. Yeah, no, it's great. It's so low drama, which is like, you know, really what I like need, which I'm sure you understand with kids. I mean, everyone is married. We're not like, you know, 21 and it's, just a different stage of life and it's nice to um you know have people who understand and who like are also but still like really involved in the music scene and like it's not a hobby you know it's more than that so yeah, yeah. and so with with kids I mean like as you look forward do you see let's just say it's a year out and things are much better do you see yourself like next year touring at, at all and kind of getting outside of the the Chicago area yeah, I would for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because their dad can take them. You know what I mean? I mean, it's nice to have like, like um, time where the he can take them and if he needs to do something, I can take them. Um, but that's allowed for more like um, time for me to do things, you know, especially during the pandemic. That was huge. I was like, divorce is great during the pandemic. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like my friends who had the kids all day, every day, and like, I don't know. Nope, I, I know. Yeah, I, I'm divorced as well, and yeah. uh, the divorce at Dad's Club. And so that time away is that, like, especially having them in the household on day, you know, they're here for like three days a, a week uh, during, yeah. to, do, to do school. And, and there's a rigorous drop off and pickup schedule and everything and, and with, with that and that's it, it, involved. But those days are where I can really focus and do, <laughs> do work when they're, when they're not here. And so it's, you know, you miss them, but then you're like, you can breathe at the same time, right? Yeah, it is like a, I mean, during the pandemic, it's a mental health issue. It's like, you have to have some time to be able to, you know, especially when we couldn't even like leave the house when we were in lockdown in Chicago, like that was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, well. But yeah, it is, um, I would definitely um, like tour, you know, with in short chunks, you know, I'm not going to go for like three months, no. but yeah, um, yeah, for sure. I'd love to, and I'd love to go somewhere warm. <laughs> go, come out this way, okay? We'll have some, yes, have some wine and uh, <laughs> there's lots of great places here that, uh, that you could play, so yeah. That sounds so nice. Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, Jess, I'm, I'm wishing you warm weather ahead, and uh, and also thank you. You know, a break from the madness, and uh, and much luck with the new album as well. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for having me. Hey, thanks for ta taking the time, and uh, yeah, look forward. To, uh, I mean, I checked out the album, but I look forward to it, uh, it being released for you guys. So, cool. thank yeah. you so much. All right. All right, that was the interview with Jess Robbins from Course, and Jens. That takes us to the final segment on the program. What is it? It does. It takes us to one of our most famous segments, historically speaking, uh, where we take the time and we put the energy into curating specific stories that we then bring on the show. Uh, they're all focused on what's happening in the world of music. It's our segment called Music News. <laughs> Yes, you like of, the way I'm, I embellish that? 
I do. I like the way you you, you really accentuate it. You make it unique each time. You know, I'm, uh, I'm like I'm like waiting for the music news so the sounder will bling. And you know, yeah, I'm and especially yeah. excited about this uh, this round of music news. I know. I figured this would be up your alley, but uh, but I'm going to go first. So I'm going to make you wait. So faster. Uh, and yeah, and there's a tribute concert that's going to happen. Uh, it's for the late. Concert. Yes, uh, for the late Adam Schlesinger. Uh, from the band Fountains of Wayne, who is beloved uh, and who we lost, I believe it was last year. Um, and lots of musicians are coming together uh, for this tribute, uh, including members of Smashing Pumpkins, The Monkees, mm -hmm. Dashboard mm -hmm. Confessional. Uh, yeah, so um, it's organized by Schlesinger's Fountains of Wayne bandmate, Jody Porter. Uh, it's a virtual gig. Uh, and it's going to uh, benefit the Grammy Awards affiliated charity, Music Hairs, which provides relief for those in the music industry affected by COVID-19, uh -huh. as, as well as currently closed New York venue, Bowery Electric. Um, and so uh, other performers include Courtney Love, James E. of Smashing Pumpkins, Patrick Carney of the Black Keys, Mickey Dolitz of the Monkees, Sean Ono Lennon, and Chris Caraba of Dashboard Confessional. Also, I know Justin Pierre from uh, Motion City Soundtrack is uh, going to play, which is pretty cool. Um, this stream takes place on May 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, tickets cost 15 pounds. I don't know how much that weight uh, transfers to an American currency, but I'm sure it's not too expensive. Um, and uh, um, and uh, for those that don't remember, Schlesinger died at age 52 following complications related to COVID-19 in April of 2020 after being hospitalized with uh, the virus. Um, and um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, and then there's more tribute stuff that, that's added, but um, but lots of great musicians coming together for a good cause. So, um, so definitely check that out. That's fantastic. I mean, we got to appreciate that stuff, you know, simply because we've appreciated it in the past. You know, we've been to shows like this and just hats off to everyone involved um in getting such a massive production you know done oh yeah and, and oh yeah ben, ben queller is playing michelle branch uh oh wow T taylor hansen from hansen uh, -huh. uh, uh ben Brand. lee uh, yeah uh yeah no B butch walker uh, uh -huh. you know famous producer uh fred armison uh mm -hmm. is, um i mean there's just a, a ton of really great names um uh, that are that are playing so really well that's fantastic out. man you know it, unfortunately it takes you know sometimes it takes a tragedy like this to bring people together but you know just i'm not really all that or, or religious of, of a person but you know god bless all the people that you know uh you know have the time and the means to to make it to these benefits absolutely you got a story for us jens i do i know you've been chomping at the bit for this one i have and you know what i'm surprised that I completely forgot about the story because I read about this before uh, we did this uh, episode, and I was gonna, you know, call you right away about it. I'm like, oh my god, we gotta talk about this. We gotta talk about this in the pot. And I, you I know, know what I, you like, Jens. I know what you, yeah, like, you, you I, do. You know me too well. You know me too well. And uh, this is a cool thing because it involves an international band, um, and I, uh, uh, and I've uh, been to Sweden. Uh, I've been to Stockholm on a on a cruise that I was on, and I had the privilege of going to the ABBA Museum. Mm. A lot of people pronounce it ABBA, but I do the like the European ABBA uh, pronunciation. So A B B A, right? The uh, the seventies kick ass dancing disco queen band, right? Uh, from Sweden, uh -huh. and. Um, their music has been featured in so many different places. I'm just thinking right now, so if I can do the article, but have you ever seen Muriel's Wedding? It sounds familiar, but I don't think I've seen it, no. Dude, you've got to fucking see this. I'll get, get right together, on that. Get together with your girlfriend. Do a date night. Watch Muriel's Wedding. The whole thing is about this actress who's a fantastic actress whose name I forgot. I, she's one of my top favorite actresses of all time. She's, she's got to be one of your favorites, yeah. Yeah, uh, she might even be from Australia because this movie takes place in Australia. 
Uh, why could I not remember her name? Anyway, she plays Muriel. It's and Tony all, Collette. Yes, Tony Collette is so fantastic, dude. I love this woman. And she is, um, she plays this character, Muriel, who's obsessed with nothing except getting married. That's all she cares about. All she wants to do is get married. She doesn't care about who she gets married to. She just wants to have this, ooh, like this perfect, you know, wedding. And uh, the movie's done so brilliantly where she's like, oh, there's this guy. I don't know what to do with this guy, whatever. You know, I just want to get married and let's have, a, let's have an ABBA wedding, you know? And oh my God, we have to have a, a this ABBA wedding thing. And um So I had the uh, so 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 anyway. So you got to see that. I don't know why I'm talking about yeah. that. But you You're going that. on over, yeah. yeah. And then and then um, and then uh, for the longest time, I had no idea that there was actually an ABBA museum. Like, how many bands have a museum? The Foo Fighters Studio is, uh, is like a museum. I, I wish I could go there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. true. Yep, yeah, that's true. I mean, you've got things like you know the Elvis. Um, museum thing yeah and yeah where's yeah. that national yeah um and you've got uh dolly pardon dolly pardon yeah. yeah and you've got the, that thing in seattle um for Jimi hendrix and other you know grunge mm -hmm. bands and um yeah. anyway so you've, you've got you've got you've got this kind of thing you know and i and i think once 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 somebody has created a museum for you before you died <laughs> uh -huh. it's pretty epic i mean you've got to be one of the best bands of all time you know if there's a if there's a museum for you before you die yes um anyway so this band abba they tease the forthcoming avatar tour um and they're saying that their avatar tour is still going to sound very much like the authentic abba sound okay right? so we're thinking dancing queen we're thinking do you hear the bells, Fernando? You know, all their, all their stuff. Um, you know, and, 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 and while I was researching this, this, this whole tour thing, I kept on wondering, what do the, what are, what are the members of the band look like now? Because the only, the only pictures I have of them are, you know, what they looked like performing and doing studio recordings and stuff back in the 70s. It was a long yeah. time ago. You know, I'm thinking like people with canes and wheelchairs and stuff. Now. Yeah, I mean, I don't but, doubt it at this point. So yeah, <laughs> right. But, but I can't find anything. So you know, all these, all these, all these members from ABBA are looking pretty fucking hot in their '70s gear, and um, they've 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 done some work. So they're set to record five new songs. Wow. To take on a tour, you know, that's been been pretty well delayed at this point. <laughs> but. Um, Time is limited for them, I'll tell you. If, you know. Yes, that is true. That is true. So uh, from the band Bjorn, uh, he's teased their forthcoming Avatar tour, promising that it still sounds very much authentic ABBA. And we would hope so. I mean, if it didn't sound authentic ABBA, if it sounded more like Metallica, that would be weird. Yeah, right? Met Metallaba. <laughs> Metallaba. <laughs> you love it can you imagine a metalaba museum like uh -huh, a, a yeah. fusion between these two bands oh my god that would be so confusing um anyway so back in 2017 it was announced that the band would reunite in digital form in 2019 oh, like two years ago um and they were going to perform as the abba tars mm, i see what they did there just like metalaba and <laughs> they're getting created with their name too yeah is that like a blend between the band and the movie Avatar? Like they're all going to be these weird green people, aliens? It could be, but Avatar has different connotations too. So carry on. We're going to get anyway, through the story one of these We days, are going so. to get through the story eventually. Yes. Um, feel free to forward wind if that's the word. <laughs> um, <laughs> Go back to episode 300 or something if you want to know. <laughs> 301 so or whatever that was. Yeah. Okay. When the reunion tour was then delayed the swedish pop icons announced back in 2018 that was three years ago that they would be sharing two new tracks Woo! Uh, with songs called i still have faith in you and don't shut me down okay oh my god doesn't that sound like okay i'm sorry i have <laughs> such a hard time keeping a train of thought right now but <laughs> shut me down wasn't that um 
Uh, mm, um. Oh my God, what's the name of our favorite band besides Foo Fighters? Uh, I don't know what you're referencing. Uh, Ireland, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Um, oh, Flogging Molly? Flogging Molly. They have like, don't shut me down. Don't shut us down. Right, anyway, sorry. It probably doesn't sound like anything I got. Uh -huh. um which was then don't don't to, shut them down is the don't shut song. them down yeah, yeah like don't shut down the factories and put people out of work and yeah yeah so uh detroit or whatever that was about so um what so for two songs uh-huh turned into like morphed into five so they're rewarding fans waiting for for the reunion um you know especially because it's been extended now because of this fucking covid shit so right we're all trying to wait patiently and experience the ABBA verse. I'm I'm being as patient as I can here, Jens, but it's you know the story yes, is taking as long as the reunion is. Uh, Avatars, <laughs> sorry, not ABBA verse. Avatars, sorry. I'm doing the extended version of the story. Okay. Uh -huh. um, yeah. la, 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 okay. A lot, bunch of blah 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 Swedish names that I can't pronounce. Blah, blah, blah. And then um, yeah. Mm, Mm, okay, so they painted dots on our faces and they measured our heads and um, and um, uh, one of the tunes is very danceable. That's good because you wouldn't good. just want to stand there and stare at your text people like, when am I leaving no. this show? And uh, the other is more timeless, more reflective. Oh, dude, it's like... That that sounds like that's a song that you need to put some thought into. Right? Yes. You're, you're, you're not going to be able to fall asleep until you're like, oh my god, what is it? Can't do it. That song. That's so intense. Um, and the rest of the story is just more or less the same stuff over and over again. So I cannot wait for this. I'm a huge ABBA fan. I went to the museum in Stockholm, Sweden, which is a must. You have even if you're not an and ABBA fan, even if you've never heard of the band, you have to go to this fucking place when you're in Stockholm, they, Sweden. When you went, did they it. have the did they have the band cryogenically frozen there? You would think they did. You would think they did, because they had kind of a virtual hologram yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Where 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 you could. Oh my god, it was the weirdest thing. I'm trying to remember what the setup was. <laughs> Okay, I might not be 100% accurate, but here you are, you're in a room in this IKEA-like setup, yeah. right? IKEA is Swedish, ABBA is Swedish, all of this stuff is in Sweden. If you've ever been to an IKEA, you're fucking forced to go through to every there. goddamn... I was in one like two weeks ago. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's not like they're... It's not like Target. There's no way out. There's Safeway, no way out. Right? You have no to go in, to no this massive <laughs> museum, right, in order to get to your goddamn car, which might take six hours. And um, that's what the Apple Museum was like. You go through every single uh, section and every section is, is, is fantastic. And it tells you so much about the band that you didn't know. And one of these sections is about experiencing what it might be like to be, an, to be a part of the band. So mm -hmm. um, what happens is uh, I believe you're facing a stage. You got the big screen. Ava on top of the stage yeah like and you are and you are yeah i think you choose your song like you can say okay i want to play dancing queen um and then all of a sudden you're yeah you're you're in this huge hologram as one of the members of abba with the other four members there and you're singing the song with them and you're 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 watching it as if it's actually live and happening back in the 70s it's really super cool um it's almost like kind of you know watching michael jackson in vegas or whatever it's all um you've got to experience this even if you've never heard the band just go it's fun uh, i'm headed there right now you you should you, you should i you I finish totally the podcast it. on your own okay you i will uh, i will uh -huh. i'll talk about dave Grohl, and then um i'll wind it out and i'll thank you you know for being the, uh, the host of, of the concert pipeline but you know uh basically um i totally agree you know i think uh abba is one of the most amazing bands of all time you agree with yourself. I like it. I agree uh, with myself. That's a, that's a man who knows what he believes in. Yeah. <laughs> and if you disagree with me, you've got to watch Muriel's Wedding because that just confirms that Abba is one of the greatest bands of all time. Fair enough. Well, you set it up. Uh, we have one more story, Jens, and it's about the almighty Dave Grohl, right? Yes! I had so, a feeling. 
Yes. So uh, Dave Grohl has announced uh, the What Drives Us documentary film. Um, and it's produced by the Foo Fighters and entitled What Drives Us. So it'll be available via the Coda collection in the US and Amazon Prime Video in select global markets beginning April 30th. Uh, Grohl had this to say, uh, this film is my love letter to every musician that's ever jumped in an old van with their friends and left it all behind for the simple reward of playing music. What started as a project to pull back the curtain on the DIY logistics of stuffing all your friends and equipment into a small space for months on end eventually turned into an exploration of why. Uh, what drives us uh, um, is the name of the documentary and uh, you can check it out. Um, on those plat that platform, I, which I have nice. no idea how to access. So I will probably not get to see it for a while when it comes to Amazon here in the US. So, well, how much uh, time do you have before you need to figure it out? I, I mean, you know, it depends on when this airs, but uh, <laughs> at, at, at this point, I think it's already uh, been that date and uh, it's already come and I, on. And I have some sleuthing to do. So, <laughs> well, you better not get any sleep, man. You better pretend you had that second COVID shot even though it was three weeks ago for you and be like, oh my God, I'm not gonna get any sleep. So spend all your time figuring out how to make the best of it. I will do absolutely do that. Uh, so Jens, that's that our shit. show for today. Thank you for, for being here and for being my esteemed co-host on this uh, program, I appreciate it. Thank you for being the host host and thank you very much again for being in this lovely band uh, who do we have on the show uh, next time around? Well, thank you, Jens, for asking. We have a musician named Patty Parks. Uh, she's a blues musician, and um, we're going to get to talk to her about the world of blues her, and her new album that's uh, coming out in May, uh, and more to come on that. So, all right. Good yes. deal. I shall uh, do the little pinky thingy and say, it was a fabulous podcast sir jones and we should do it again very briefly i think we shall till next week so for all of us here at concert pipeline mr shippel uh, that is jens shippel <laughs> yes uh, it is good to see you too mr jones that is mrs steve jones and i shall say cheers and toast and cheerio to you we'll catch you next time